Oh, wait. <laughs> no, second. Yep. Okay, thank, you. thank you so much, Richard. Just, we will take care of it. Okay. okay. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us this evening. We all set to go. Okay. Thank you. May I have a motion to adjourn from the executive session at seven o seven, please? I'll make a motion. Thank you. May I have a second? I'll second it. Roll call vote, Mrs. Shockley. Yes. Mrs. Lima. Yes. Ms. Ludwig. Yes. Mr. LeBlanc. Yes. Mrs. Dixon. Yes. Five yeas, no nays. The motion passes. May I have a motion to seal the minutes of the executive session? So moved. May I have a second? I'll second it. Thank you. Roll call vote, Mrs. Shockley. Yes. Mrs. Lima. Yes. Ms. Ludwig. Yes. Mr. LeBlanc. Yes. Mrs. Dixon. Yes. Five yeas, no nays. The motion passes. The council met in executive session for the following, close pursuant to Rhode Island General Law 42465A12, discussion job performance, character, physical and mental health of a person or persons, specifically for the council to discuss candidates for the following board openings, Parks and Recreation Commission. We interviewed two candidates, no votes were taken. The council will appoint um, or start making appointments in November. And close pursuant to Rhode Island General Law 42465A2, discussion pertaining to collective bargaining or litigation specifically for an update on Social versus Coventry KC 2020-0769 litigation with the town solicitor. A discussion took place. No votes were taken. Agenda item C2, approval of town council meeting minutes for August. Point of 30. order, Madam yes. President. Um, I just wanted to take a moment and put forward a motion to table item E3 before we proceed. Uh, we were going to do that when we came to the that agenda item, but we certainly can take it up now. Uh, may I have a motion to table item E3, which is the... Um, Awarding a bid for the sale of Mapledale School. May I have a motion to a table? I'll make the motion. Thank you. May I have a second? I'll second it. Roll call vote. Mr. Shockley? Yes. Mrs. Lima? Yes. Ms. Ludwig? Yes. Mr. LeBlanc? Yes. Mrs. Dixon? Yes. Five yeas, no nays. The motion is tabled. Thank you. Back to, thank you. Uh, back to item C2. Approval of town council meeting minutes for August 30th, 2021. Madam Clerk, did you receive any corrections for these meeting minutes? Reference pages five to 11. 
I did. I received one set of corrections. Did you make the corrections? Yes. Excellent. May I have a motion to accept the amended meeting minutes for August 23rd, 2021? So moved. May I have a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? Roll call vote, Mrs. Shockley? Yes. Mrs. Lima? Yes. Mr. Ludwig? Yes. Mr. LeBlanc? Yes. Mrs. Dixon? Yes. Five yeas, no nays. The motion passes. President update. Um, you've heard me say this before, but we'll continue to say it. Uh, the council is recruiting neighbors who want to improve our community to make it a place that is highly desirable to live, work, and enjoy leisure time. We have nine openings on the Charter Review Commission. We've interviewed a great number of candidates. We're still looking for a few more so that we can start this commission as quickly as possible. We want to get that group started in December so that they can start deliberating in early January and come back to the council by May of 2022 uh, with their recommendations. Um, we also have two to three openings on the Conservation Commission, three full and two alternate openings for the sewer subcommittee. We have one opening anticipated in November for one land trust member. We have one opening anticipated for November for one sewer assessment board of review member. We have nine openings for Park and Recreation Commission. We've been interviewing, you heard just this evening, we interviewed two more candidates, and we do hope to get that group started um, hopefully in November. Uh, we have one to two openings on the Coventry School Building Committee. There was a recent res resignation for a member who enjoyed his um, participation, but because of his work schedule, he's unable to continue. And that is a very good committee that you might want to consider. And all applications are available online at CoventryRI.org. I'd also like to announce that Governor McKee has lifted the executive order regarding public meetings. Local governments have the option to continue Zoom meetings with public participation allowed. Our council will continue the practice of using Zoom for the public, and council members, however, as public officials, will not be able to participate in a meeting if they are on Zoom, but certainly we encourage the public to either come here in person or participate by Zoom, we will allow public comment both for those who are here in person and also those who may be on Zoom. We want to encourage, as I said, public participation. We want all members of the community to be actively engaged and we will do whatever we can to make that happen. Our next update is by our town manager, Mr. Ben Marchand. Mr. Marchand. Thank you, Madam President. Um, as an update, uh, we've been looking into the uh, project on Sandy Bottom Bridge that uh, Rhode Island Department of Transportation is involved with. And uh, we understand that they're taking comment that they are looking at the situation. We've raised some concerns about the um, integrity of our sewer line that's running very close to that project before they start on the northbound side of the, the bridge construction. Um, they have indicated that they won't be uh, beginning construction until the spring. Uh, so we have a little extra time to evaluate the situation, uh, but they do know of our concerns and have acknowledged them. Um, but we haven't gotten anything definitive as to what they would do to indemnify or protect the town's assets. So uh, our sewer line is on town property, but that town property is also within the state right of way. And so there's a certain amount of, uh, you know, privilege that they enjoy to go ahead with their project as the state, uh, but uh, they have indicated that they would work with us. So uh, more to come on that. Any questions? Um, uh, Mrs. Lima. Just um, out of curiosity, um, I, this is kind of separate from the concern about the sewer line, but um, if you could get any update on the progress of the project, I think the completion date on the signs is 2024, but that's a main artery into town. And I know people are really anxious to get that back to normal, especially because it's in the a business district of town. And personally in my district, many of the roads in district four are used as cut throughs from 117 to Tioke Ave. So increased traffic and dangerous traffic at that and residential neighborhoods to get to Tioke instead of using Sandy Bottom is an issue. So um, I know it's not directly related to the talking about the integrity of the sewer lines through the project, but if there's 
I, any way we can get an idea of if that's going to finish on time, ahead of schedule, behind schedule, um, I think the town really should consider advocating to push for it to finish sooner just because of the impact it's having on the safety of some of our residential neighborhoods and the economic climate in town. But just want to put that out there. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Lima. Any other comments? Yes, Ms. Blackwick. Can you please just outline what the concern is? Is it just the proximity or is there a specific concern? So there were two elements to the concerns that have been raised. Um, first is the proximity. And um, when they were p driving the piles for the southbound bridge, um, it was in close proximity to the new water bridge that Kent County Water Authority had constructed. And the they were driving piles to a depth of 75 feet and hit rock at 45 feet and just continued pounding. And the, the jarring impacts um, disturbed the alignment of the water bridge and, and caused sufficient damage that um, they had to go and repair it. Uh, so as they move closer to the, the west, the east side towards our sewer line, we're just concerned that any impact could adversely impact our sewer line. Uh, while the sewer line is um, concrete encased uh, steel, uh, or sorry, ductile iron, um, the integrity of the lines itself are probably secure because it's bedded, it's in the ground, and it's not going to have the same kind of uh, movement that the water bridge going through the air would have. But uh, we, we can't be sure about the joints or a failure or if it were to collapse or anything could happen, uh, we just can't predict. So we want to know that there, that RIDA is going to be mindful of the impacts that they're having on the infrastructure nearby and that they would cover any costs for damage caused it as a result of their project. Thank you. Any other questions? Mrs. Lima. And just to put it out there so people understand the severity and why we're make asking this question. I think we talked about this at the sewer subcommittee that if a line, the line was damaged and was not, and sewage was not flowing properly or wasn't being able to use. Um, I think we talked about businesses seeing disruptions. So if there was, you know, restaurants that had bathrooms, they wouldn't be able to use those and so on and so forth. There'd be pretty big ramifications if this did break as a result of the construction. So we're just taking this very seriously. Thank you. Okay, your next update, Mr. Marshall. Yes. Um we won't be discussing the town's financial reports for the months of, of uh, July, August, and September uh, due to the fact that the finance department has been completely busy with the audit and getting our audited financial statements prepared. Uh, that is due by December 31st of the year by state statute. And so uh, we do hope to have those reports ready by the November 22nd meeting. Thank you. Any questions? All right. We're on agenda item D1, consent agenda for discussion and or action. The first item is D1, discussion awarding the following bid for the planning zoning department of the comprehensive plan. Um, Madam Clerk, would you please read the resolution on page 14? A resolution approving a labor agreement between the town of Coventry. No. Wait a minute. She said one, two, one. 14. All right. Sorry. The town of Coventry town council desires to complete a major update of the Coventry comprehensive community plan for the town of Coventry. And whereas the town of Coventry issued a request for proposal from qualified service providers and respondents to perform community engagement and planning services to update the comprehensive plan that the town last updated June 19, 2000. And whereas the town of Coventry received two proposals for the provision of comprehensive plan consulting services from Weston and Sampson for 95,000 and from the beta group for $157,840. And whereas the proposal from the beta group is responsive to the needs and priorities of the town and demonstrates a comprehensive value and 
commensurate with the town's needs. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Town of Coventry Town Council to accept the proposal from Beta Group to provide comprehensive plan services for the Town of Coventry and authorize the town manager to execute the same pursuant to Article 10, Section 10.23 of the Town Charter to Beta Group Incorporated 701 George Washington Highway, Lincoln, Rhode Island, 02865 for the cost of $157,840. Now, therefore, be it further resolved by the town council to appropriate $157,840 from COVID reimbursements of lost revenues in prior years for the expenditure of the comprehensive plan. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, may I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Thank you, Mayor. I'll second the motion. Thank you. <clears throat> Discussion. Uh, Mr. Crossman, yes. please speak to this motion. Do you have a guest with you from Beta Group? I do. I have uh, four gentlemen from Beta Group. Uh, I wasn't sure. Um, we weren't sure if you wanted a presentation. They're prepared to give a short 10 minute presentation if you wanted one. Yes, you would like one. Yes, okay. We would like one. So I'll bring them forward now. Please introduce them. I will. Um, you're going to have to forgive me. Richard Bernardo will handle the, um, the introductions. Mr. Rossman, perhaps you could just introduce how we got to this point in the sure. process before we have them. Go. Sure. We, um, as you all know, we had put this out to bid quite a while ago. We did not receive any bids. Um, the town manager and I, we put it back out to bid. We received two bids. Um, we interviewed both firms, um, which was Beta Group and um, Weston and Sampson. I wanted to say Weston and Sampson. And um, we interviewed both, and we felt that this um, – Beta Group was the uh, best choice for the town of Coventry. They were the, they were more responsive than the other group, and um, uh, this is our, the recommendation the town manager and I are making to you here this evening. So, that being said, I'll introduce Mr. Richard. Excellent. Ben. Thank you. Um, I know uh, you've been looking forward to this for a long time. It's long overdue. So um, well, I'd like to introduce. To. You have to. All of us have. All of us have. Richard Bernardo, who is a senior vice president with uh, Beta Group. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to come and present before you tonight. I have Randy Collins. Jeff Max Tudis and Tito Sanchez from the company. Uh, Tito and Randy will be available for questions. We're going to let Jeff Max Tudis, the planner, go ahead with the presentation. Jeff? Good evening. Hello, would you just um, uh, spell your name for our record, please? Sure. Uh, first name's Jeff, J-E-F-F. -F. Last name is Max Tutis, M-A-X-T-U-T-I-S. Thank you. You're welcome. So we have a, a brief presentation, and this is basically the same presentation. I'm sorry, just one moment. Um, I know we're um, doing something a little different tonight with... Um, Zoom, but if we could possibly share, I, I might be yeah. speaking as you're doing something. So sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Is this, uh, is it the full slide mode? Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for having us tonight. Um, so we have a brief presentation. This is essentially the same uh, presentation we used at our interview a couple weeks ago. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so Beta Group, uh, we're a local company um, established in 1982. We're employee owned. Every employee has a stake uh, in, in the company. And we do most of our work for uh, municipalities uh, such, such as Coventry. Almost all of our work is done in uh, southern, uh, southern New England. Next slide. Multidisciplinary firm, uh, transportation, structural, civil, um, environmental, landscape architecture, and most of those uh, elements are are used to evaluate the uh, in the master plan or comprehensive plan. Next, 
So that's our team. Uh, this team is made up of uh, senior professionals. You'll see these people at uh, public meetings and stakeholder meetings throughout the project. Uh, with me here tonight is Rich Bernardo, um, senior vice, uh, vice president. Um, that's me in the corner. Randy Collins uh, in charge of landscape architecture and urban development at Beta. Eric Galley is another landscape architect and planner. Uh, responsible for community services and open space and recreation. Tito Sanchez is here behind me, uh, GIS and mapping expert. Uh, Marty Nova is um, environmental expert. Uh, Judy Barrett is our one sub-consultant from Barrett Planning. Uh, she specializes in land use, housing, economic development, and um, Emily Slotnick is our project manager. Um, unfortunately, she couldn't be here tonight, as is Anthony Garrow, our principal in charge. But both both of those people are very experienced in uh, planning uh, and comprehensive planning, especially. Next slide. This is just an, an organizational chart that shows the elements, all the elements in the plan. Um, the only thing I'll mention here is that uh, Emily uh, Emily Slotnick, the project manager, is also a um, resiliency and sustainability expert, and so she'll be running the energy and renewable energy um, hazardous uh, nat natural hazardous element of the project. Also, next slide. So Beta Group has a lot of experience doing comprehensive plans for municipalities. We've done over a dozen uh, in, in really so, uh, southern New England. Um, we've also done recently eight sustainability and uh, municipal vulnerability plans, and hazardous mitigation plans. The Barrett Planning Group has done over 20 comprehensive plans, is also an expert in zoning and land use. And Barrett Planning and Beta have teamed on several of uh, these projects and comprehensive plans. We're doing one right now in Massachusetts, so we're well known to each other. Next slide. So I'm going to just go through the elements of the plan, but for each of these elements, what we do is we inventory existing conditions. We let you know what you have today in each of these elements. We identify where you want to be in the next 20 years, and we help you identify how to get there, what strategies and actions are needed to get there of what you want to see. Natural resources, outdoor recreation, and open space, historic and cultural resources, the housing, next slide please. Uh, all services and facilities and utilities, water, wastewater, stormwater, solid waste management, all assets in the town, all buildings in the town are done under services and facilities. Next slide. Transportation looks at how to move people and safety, really looking at people of uh, all ages and abilities uh, to get around town uh, safely. Natural hazards and climate change, um, Emily will be, be uh, leading this, including uh, renewable, uh, renewable resources. Land use will be uh, summarizing existing land use, but also what the land use patterns might look like in 20 years. And one of the most important uh, pieces of the plan is implementation. And how do we identify how these things get implemented? We look at timeframes, short-term, medium, long-term. We look at pre preliminary cost estimates. We look at who's responsible for implementation. So if this plan isn't something that just sits on a shelf, they will actually be implemented. Lots of times during our work, we identify early action items that actually can be implemented during the process. So it kind of buys uh, credibility for the plan as we do it. Next slide. We'll develop a high quality report that's easily readable, that has high quality graphics. These are some examples for some of our other projects. And these maps will be used throughout the project, but they'll also be used for some of our public meetings. So they, they serve a dual purpose. We evaluate and use those to summarize information and data but they're useful when we go to public meetings. Next slide. Here's a slide just to show some of our D, uh, GIS uh, technology. As I mentioned, uh, Tito Sanchez is here, one of our GIS experts. We use this information uh, throughout the project uh, to summarize existing conditions and look at impacts of future conditions. Next slide. The public engagement is uh, an important part, uh, one of the most important parts of the plan. 
Uh, we use many different techniques to reach out to stakeholders and the public, including those that are hard to reach. Uh, in addition to uh, hosting meetings and interviews, we have uh, things like pop-up tables. We do uh, pop-ups at locations in town. Uh, they can be uh, places like supermarkets and post office, but really anywhere we need to go to uh, meet residents, uh, to listen to their opinions and get their feedback on, on the project. Next slide. And with COVID, we've done a number of virtual meetings. Hopefully, we won't have to do those, but we can do those or can do hybrid meetings as we have to. And at those meetings, we could do just about anything we can. And it's an in-person meeting. Uh, we do webinar formats. We do meeting formats. We've done breakout rooms in different elements. We do polling. We do chat boxes. So any type of meeting um, that we need to have, we're flexible to do that, you know, throughout the project. And, you know, we could have combinations. So we'd like to have in-person meetings, but some Sometimes virtual meetings um, are useful also. So why beta? We're a Rhode Island firm uh, based in Lincoln. As I mentioned before, we're employee owned. Uh, we have lots of experience in communities similar to Coventry in size and similar issues. Uh, we have excellent in-house GIS and mapping and planning resources. Uh, we've done many comprehensive and master plans throughout Southern New England. And really we're here to help you um, form your vision for the community for the next 10, uh, 20 years and help you uh, achieve that vision uh, through an implementation plan and uh, assure that the quality of life uh, for Coventry residents is met for the next 20 years. And that's our presentation. We're uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, members of the council, questions that you might have. Mrs. Shockley. Um, thank you very much for coming tonight for the presentation. Um, I am wondering the timeline on a project like this for your company. Mm -hmm. We're showing uh, 24 months. Um, Sometimes we can do it sooner, so 18 to 24 months if it's possible, but um, 24 months is uh, on, on the, uh, the long range. But if we could do it shorter, we'll do it if we can. I don't want, I'm not looking to rush, you, just <laughs> looking for the timeline. Um, and I also wonder, um, we're currently doing a performance audit as well um, with a shorter timeline. So I don't know if you've ever been involved with a town that was doing a performance audit to see how we're doing in implementing our current programs with our school and our um, town agencies. And if there's any, not if not overlap to the two projects, places where you might be able to discuss with the company that's doing that audit right now, because there do seem to be things that overlap. I don't know if, if uh, Mr. Marchant, you agree that with what we might get from that performance audit, it might overlap in some way. I, I don't see a lot of overlap, but I do see that in the, in the time frame that we're going to have the performance audit concluded, um, if there's any information from that to bring forward, we will. Um, but I think really what a comprehensive plan involves is a lot more, um, like he said, research and data analysis based on census data and existing patterns and operational concerns of the town, um, traffic yeah, where, where we've had traffic issues, congestion, accidents, and that sort of thing. They'll look at the data, but that's different than looking internally as to how our municipal staff uh, responds to accidents or administers their departments. So the performance audit's really more internal to the organization looking. This is more looking at the community and the overall uh, development of the meeting the community's needs for parks, transportation planning, infrastructure, and that sort of thing. So they're a little different, but any relationship we can exploit. Yeah, it seems we're looking into so much about our town right now. I'd like to see how they do overlap. Sure. Thank you. Um, Mr. LeBlanc. Um, how quickly can you start? We can start as uh, soon as we have a signed contract. Okay. I just didn't know if there was uh, any delay there. And um, could you just um, maybe talk about the most recent one or two towns in Rhode Island that you have done this project for, this type of project? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
uh, Randy Collins. Uh, the w- most recent ones we've done in uh, Rhode Island actually date back a little while. Um, we've done the complete master plan for Exeter and uh, North Providence. Okay. They admittedly were uh, a number of years ago, but um, we've also done a number of other planning studies within Rhode Island that are sort of concurrent to a master plan. Uh, Eric and Jeff just finished Watch from Oakett Square in East Providence, which was an economic development and placemaking um, uh, planning study that uh, was completed about six six months ago or so. Okay. Um, and then I guess excluding those ones because those are a little dated, um, how often do you guys go above and over the quote that you give? The we, have, we have a senior vice president with us, so we hesitate to answer that question, honestly. <laughs> uh, okay. I just, it's a fair question, I think. It is a fair question. And Excuse me. Uh, please please come to the microphone. Introduce yourself. And Rich Bernardo again. Uh, it is a fair question, and we never exceed the budget without authorization from the community. We have done these uh, comprehensive plans it, all throughout New England, we have shown uh, the, the manager and the planner a very similar uh, community in Do- uh, Derry, New Hampshire, Derry, that won the state planning award recently. So okay. well, there haven't been a lot in Rhode Island. That's the, the biggest answer. So we've, we're showing you our experience that's continuous and recent with a community that's very similar and actually won the state award. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Well, other questions? Ms. Ludwig. Where did you get this awful picture of the bridge? It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. We're working on it. Um, I just had a couple quick questions. So on the housing portion, so... Um, I'm just wondering, is there any review that you do against uh, local versus state regulation? So some of the stuff that we're dealing here locally is um, how much affordable housing we have versus what the state says that we have. Developers coming in, developing land, particularly uh, in the western, mid to western area of Coventry, where they come in and say, oh, I got 100 and we'll work with you to get it down to 60 and it's all going to be on one well. And we're like, Okay, because if we say no, the state's going to come in and say, go ahead and do 85. So I'm just wondering, is there any any type of work with um, the state regulation or anything that you look at to see how we can can work in that area better? Yeah, our, our, how, well, our housing experts not here, uh, Judy Bear tonight, but um, th- that that's that's part of our review, a comparison uh, with uh, you know state standards, regulations, guidelines compared to local. And when we start off the project, we'll we'll sit with the uh, the steering committee and identify those types of issues or evaluations that we want to conduct. So I, w- I would say yes. Okay, thank you. And I have one other um, question. So on the public engagement front. We have some uh, truly amazing citizens in Coventry, and we also have some very tough critics. So can you just give us an example of how you might deal with um, someone who may be frustrated uh, with some of the services with the town or their expectations not being met in the past? It's, it's okay. I mean, we're, so when we do our, our interviews and uh, getting information and feedback, we're, we're, we want to hear about everything. So we're going to ask people, what do you like about the town? And we're going to say, what, what do you don't like? So we want to hear both sides and uh, give people a chance to input and feedback. It doesn't mean when we come up with goals or strategies or actions that everyone's going to agree and we have consensus on those from everyone. That's just Part, part of the process, but we, we, we make it inclusive. Everyone's going to have a chance to you know, hear their voice on this. And um, we, we make it an equitable process. So there's going to be plenty of opportunities for people to be heard. Um, and, and we do that throughout the process. It's, it's very rare that we hear something new in the last month of the project, the last public meeting, but it can happen and people are, are welcome to have their viewpoints. So that's our aim. And we will develop a, a participation plan before we start a little We'll review with the town to make sure that uh, you're in agreement with the plan and uh, it's a fair, inclusive uh, process throughout. Welcome. Uh, Mrs. Lima. Um, 
I just, I, this is kind of a question for maybe the town manager and for beta, but um, I noticed in the timeline in the back of the booklet you gave us, it mentions in the timeline reviewing the 2000 and 2010 plan. But according to this memo from the town manager, it doesn't look like we have done a comprehensive plan since 2000. Um, so I'm just curious if the fact that we haven't done a plan for 20 years, does that make your job harder and make it so the process has to go on longer or does that affect it at all? Or well, that's what the, uh, Rich Bernardo again, that's the way the project was scoped. We knew that when we read the RFP and we had done the due diligence. So our proposal is based upon okay. when it was done. And then just a question. I don't know if Mr. Gorham knows the answer to this, but do we, are we penalized as a community for not abiding by that Rhode Island general law that's cited in the memo for having to do a comprehensive plan every 10 years or what's the consequences? For eventually not? there, there might be a sanction, but I've, I think as soon as we engage a firm to okay. do the plan, we're probably in a safe harbor. Okay. Just want to make sure. Uh, Mr. Marshawn. I, I would say that the bigger liability that communities suffer more often is that because they don't have a very current plan, they're not as eligible or competitive for state grants or federal grants where they want to see a current parks plan or a master plan for streets where if it's current, then you'll be more eligible for funding opportunities than otherwise. Okay. Just want to make sure because based on that, we're not in compliance. So I wasn't sure if we were being punished. So um, thank you. Um, thank you, gentlemen. Um, I did go through the proposal, um, and it was very interesting to see the kinds of projects you worked on, and it seemed like they were targeted areas within communities. So I went to your list of projects that you've participated in to see if I could see an example of an entire community comprehensive plan. So I did look at the website for Harvard, Hingham, uh, Tewksbury, et cetera. So, for example, when I looked at the one for Tewksbury, um, there was a list of recommendations. It almost sounded like it was an audit of the community. It sounded like after you finish after two years, we still have a very long list of things that we need to do. Uh, when I looked at the one for Hingham, a list of policies with lots of action items that require a lot of action on our part. So I'm wondering, is this a typical template for the kind of report or master plan that you present to a community? It's a list of things that we now need to do based on your interviews and uh, the, the research that you've done. I'm trying to understand what we're going to get as a product and what we are going to have to do with that product. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty typical that we have a list of um, actions or strategies, and we like to package them into an impl implementation plan, though, that shows you when things can be done. Some things can be done earlier. Some things can be done later. Um, but yes, it is um, a list of um, actions um, that are prioritized by town. That doesn't mean you have to um, do, do all those things. Of course, no one can probably do all those things, but you have to have a, a prioritization of the most important items that you like to do mm -hmm. both in the short term and long term. And having that, um, that list helps you uh, develop funding for some of those items. And it's not like you, you're going to see that at the end. We're going to work with you to develop that list you know, throughout, throughout the project. So it's, a, it's really a process of, of getting there. So there are many things that won't, won't make it into that plan that we talk about, but that, that list of priorities projects, they'll really drive the implementation plan of the report. So uh, there's, there's different ways to do that. And uh, if you look at, you know, some types of different comp plans, you'll see that those, those strategies or actions are summarized in, in different ways. And we can work with you to develop the right format, you know, for, for this community. So do you carry us through our development of an implementation plan based on those policies and actions that you are listing in the report? So the implementation plan is part, is part of this plan, but after that implementation is the responsibility of the town. Mm -hmm. Lots of times we, uh, we suggest that there is an implementation committee that goes on after the planning process to follow up on those actions. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions by members of the council? Mrs. Shockley. Um, I wonder, when we first put out the RFP, um, was there a reason you didn't reply? 
no. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, every single time there's a, a uh, an RFP on the street, we we just met today and took two off of our list. Depending upon our workload, we're not going to submit a uh, proposal unless we know we can deliver. The timing is right. Uh, when it came back out, we're very fortunate that you did come back out. Uh, we were given a second chance at it. The time we have the people available, uh, we have new planners on staff. We have the senior staff available. So it was just a matter of timing. Great, thank you. Uh, the other question I'd like to ask you is this: um, the last time we engaged with a company to develop a comprehensive plan for us, we really didn't quite realize that that. Uh, consulting company that we had hired was not doing the entire plan. It required a lot of input by members of our staff who did not have the expertise or the time to complete the plan. So we need to understand whether we are going to receive the whole package or whether you're doing pieces of it, but then you expect our staff to do other parts of the plan. No, we're responsible for the entire plan. We're not. We're not going to ask you to do um, write any sections of the report. We'll do that, but we're going to ask for input. We're going to interview staff, perhaps some of you during the process, and um, get f feedback and ask for reviews. But we're responsible for the entire plan. Okay, that's encouraging news. <laughs> Very encouraging news. Okay, thank you. Other questions by members of the council. Um, thank you, gentlemen. I'd like to ask Mr. Crossman to come up and. Um, give his his comments concerning this proposal that we have before us. Um, I think this is a uh, it's a good proposal. I think they're going to do a fine job. Um, I'm confident that. Um, you know, you you asked about last time. I asked around last time why we didn't, um, why people didn't bid. I did do a follow up, and um, I guess our timeline was a little tight. It was a little aggressive for them, so that's why this time in this proposal we did not put out a timeline. And um, obviously, it worked because we got a couple more bids. But um, uh, I'm excited to work uh, with Beta, uh, as I, I believe the town manager is also. We both feel that they're going to do a, a great job for the town. Um, a couple of things that uh, I just wanted to briefly touch upon, you know, the committees we're going to set up. The way I envision this, um, I'll be reaching out to all of you. We, I, I would love to see, I'd like to see a representative. I want each district represented on this committee because each district has different concerns and needs. So um, at a minimum, we're going to have, I, I had envisioned somewhere around seven to nine members, but at a minimum, we're going to have um, five from um, each district, uh, one from each district. And um, I just, um, um, I'm anxious to get this started. I, I think it's a good thing. It's long overdue. And um, I, I'm excited about it. I think it's a good thing. And I'm excited to be working with uh, this uh, group that we have here before us. And as Beta Group, I'm um, committed to have a, a, a single point of contact, a, a project manager assigned to this particular project. Uh, yes, I believe it's Anthony Garrow and, um, and Emily Slotnick will be the two uh, prime um, principal contacts for this project. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions by members of the council? Just, Mr. LeBlanc. Uh, just a comment, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Crossman. Um, I would appreciate if we could have sessions on a weekend as well, not only just during the week. I believe the last time this happened, it was um, evenings uh, during the week, and it wasn't on the weekend, at least the one that I attended for my district. You went to the one at Club Jokes, right? I, I did. Wasn't that a Saturday morning? No, it was, it was an was evening. Not... Oh, okay. So I just um, would appreciate if we maybe they do it during the week, and then we maybe we even um, have meetings on the weekends. Absolutely. That's all. I mean, we want... We want to hear what the people have to say. And if it's easy to on the week, which I believe it is easier for most folks on the weekends, then that's what we'll do. Other questions? You ready for a vote? Um, tell the gentleman that we forgive them for using a old picture of our bridge. <laughs> I couldn't see the picture, but if I'm a gambling man, I would have said it was a picture of the train, the trestle bridge. 
I thought so. It's basically the Korean stories it's the one that needs to be painted yes it does yes 100 mr okay. crossman okay are we ready for are we ready for a vote okay um we're ready for the vote um the resolution the resolution has been read um mrs shockley yes mrs lima yes Ms. ludwig yes mr leblanc absolutely mrs dixon yes five yeas no nays the motion passes. Beta Group, congratulations. We're looking forward to working with you and uh, hope to facilitate the process. And maybe if it could be done in a year, we'd be very happy. Uh, <laughs> whatever it takes, we're willing to help facilitate that process. Thank you so much. And we do appreciate your customizing your slides and using photographs from our um, bike path and uh, our bridge and, and so on and so forth. So thank you for the customization. Okay, um, item number D2, approval of the collective bargaining agreement between the Town of Coventry and the International Brotherhood of Police Officers, IBPO, Local 306, reference pages 15 to 74. The council has a copy of the agreement in its packet. The council has also discussed this agreement in an executive session on October 12th, uh, 2021. Madam Clerk, please read the resolution, page 15. A resolution approving a labor agreement between the Town of Coventry and the International Brotherhood of Police Local 306 from the period July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. Resolved the Town Council of the Town of Coventry authorizes the Town Manager to execute a collective bargaining agreement between the Town of Coventry and the International Brotherhood of Police Officers, Local 306, for the period July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. May I have a motion from a member of the council? I'll make the motion. May I have a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? I know that we have the uh, members of the union bargaining a team with us. Would any member like to make any statement before we take our vote? They're all looking at each other. None of you were shy when we were in negotiations. <laughs> Are you all set? We're all set. Thank okay, you. thank you. Any discussion by members of the council? Okay. Ready for the vote? Mrs. Shockley? Yes. Mrs. Lima? Yes. Ms. Ludwig? Yes. Mr. LeBlanc? Yes. Mrs. Dixon? Yes. Five yeas, no nays. The motion passes. Congratulations, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure working with you. It was well. Thank you. Thank you. Our next item is D3. Um, Mr. Robert Robillard, Director of Human Service, will make a presentation on Tis the Season program. Mr. Robillard. Good evening. Thanks for the opportunity to talk about the great work that happens out of my department. Um, the Tis the Season program, as the name kind of gives gives away the hint, it's all around Christmas and making sure families and children in our town uh, are able to celebrate uh, a positive holiday experience. Um, this is a volunteer organization that's helped families in Coventry since 1992. Um, Throughout the years, we've assisted families with uh, food, gifts, clothing. Um, some of the uh, important work that happens is we do a lot of community collaboration in this particular project. We have businesses that adopt families. We have families within our town that adopt families as well. Um, by adopting families, they are able to um, provide uh, the food, clothing, and gifts for, for children here in town. Um, this past year, um, our, we, we serviced about 120 families um, in our general uh, TIS program. And in the adoptive uh, program, we did about 189. 
This includes um, our local businesses like our banks, um, a lot of our restaurants. Um, there's uh, some of the um, just members of our community that have their own businesses that um, do food drives for us. Um, the school district uh, works in collaboration with us so that we're helping families that they know that, that are in need and they make referrals directly to our department so that we're able to assist them. Um, this, as you know, since I said from 1992, there's been lots of years of collaboration. Um, this past year with COVID, we kind of had to uh, pivot and switch the way we did, uh, did our work. Um, we used to have folks go out and do shopping and people weren't able to get out very much last year, as you know. Um, so we were able to um, have donations of gift cards be given to parents so that they could shop for their children. No one knows their children like they do. Um, one of the um, programs, I think the caveat is that it's respectful services. Uh, we are able to give the um, parents and grandparents or some some of our grandparents are uh, caregivers to their grandchildren with consistency and live in the same household and they're able to go out and shop and kind of uh, being able to um, take some power back and uh, provide that for their children. Um, I know that each of you, I hope we're given a packet. Um, I, uh, Councilwoman Ludwig came in came for a visit so we could explain the program to her. Um, one of the things that happens is when we get referrals for this program, um, the um, family comes in uh, and meets with one of our social workers so that they're able to get assessed. Because one of the things we know, if you're, if you're in need of this, you may be in need of other things. Um, so we really look at the social determinants of health uh, questions when folks come in, which basically uh, ask answer questions about people's safety in their homes, their ability to have food on the table, pay their utilities, all those things that um, some of us in the community take for granted, but a lot of folks struggle with. So this program basically um, is an entry as well into getting folks um, into other services too. So one of the things I can say about this uh, I think worthwhile community building project is it also incorporates our first responders too. Uh, we do a boot day, which is folks know when they're stuck in traffic. We've been doing it on Sandy Bottom Road, exactly where we talked about last year. We did that there. Um, so people automatically stop. Um, and uh, all those funds that are, are donated um, go directly to service for uh, folks that I'm, I'm talking about, the children and families here in town. Our boot day this year will be on uh, November 20th on a Saturday. Uh, the We'll be starting early in the morning. I can say that our um, special thanks go out to our, our police department and our, and our fire district uh, here in town. Um, Chief Brown and his staff um, have graciously helped us for the entire period, so has our police department. Um, so I think it's a real community-wide effort um, that we're able to you know, pull folks together and, and actually help our neighbors in need. Thank you. Um, Mr. Robillard, in what way might the town council help you? Well, I think advertise is a, a good because we want to make sure we're helping as many people as we can. Um, I think uh, maybe adopting a family wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, I think that's a good business for a lot of our local businesses. They have done it for um, over 20 years. Uh, and we do at the end of each project, uh, we have a, a, a thank you that goes out to the community because there's a lot of um, just regular families that adopt as well. We could always use um, any any families that would like to uh, to donate. We're more than willing to uh, make sure those funds and those um, donations of food or, or whatever you'd like to donate are able to get to the people that need it the most. Okay. Any, uh, Mr. LeBlanc. Uh, Mr. LeBlanc, um, is there like a website where people can um, go on and, and make a donate? Um, we donation? did We Sorry. did last year, we did our first um, GoFundMe um, piece to make sure that we did that way because we, you know, we're kind of just getting into the digital age, unfortunately, okay. a little bit behind the times. Uh, we'll be reopening that. We have, uh, we just had a, uh, a meeting recently this past week and we'll be meeting next week as well um, to reopen that. So we'll send that out. Um, I'll get that to the, uh, to the council also to our, uh, our Facebook page and um, make sure folks are aware of, Great. you know, that information. Thank you. Appreciate it. 
Any other questions? Ms. Ludwig. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, there were a few items uh, that we discussed uh, when I visited you over at the center at 50 Wood Street that I just wanted to comment on um, in a public manner. So uh, as many of the local uh, places in town either start their food drives or families have their uh, donations that they're, that they're working on, um, one thing that has stood out to me uh, very recently, uh, a lot of places donate food to the Rhode Island Food Bank, not realizing that Coventry now has to go to the Rhode Island Food Bank and buy the food and then transport it back to Coventry. So I think this is an excellent time of the year to kind of put a reminder out there to the public that uh, we have local needs and we have a place to keep um, food and donations. And so um, I would ask the public to please consider uh, putting Coventry uh, on your map first, possibly this year, rather than donating to Rhode Island Food Bank and then having us buy it back. Um, and then the second thing, um, when we were talking about Tis the Season um, and you had reviewed your um, just your initial assessment plan when someone comes in uh, to talk with you or a social worker, um, I was under an absolutely false assumption that you had to meet federal poverty guidelines or, or income levels to even have a conversation with your team. And um, just through an initial conversation, I learned that it is very situational based. It is not specific to income. So I was hoping if you could just spend a minute and talk about an example of a, of a situational item that we can direct some of our uh, residents to if we, we find or hear um, that they're in that position. Sure. Our department provides services for every resident in Coventry. Um, there's a lot of situations that happen in people's lives, loss of income, um, maybe uh, death of a spouse, um, changes in um, living circumstances. There's a variety of things. I mean, it's very individualized. That's one of the things I think um, we're different than the state because the state is strictly economic guidelines for the most part. You know, people may have a health uh, crisis that happens and aren't able to, to, you know, to to do what they need to do to that, you know, the previous level. Uh, so a lot of the work that we do is, I mean, we have, I have a great staff of social workers who basically know, have been part of this town or dedicated to this town and can assess very readily in, and actually map people into other programs that they might be eligible for as well. Um, so that's the reason we changed the name of from the senior center to a resource and senior center is because that's what, that's what our goal is, is to continually be a resource to our town. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Uh, before we move on to the next agenda item, I do want to thank our Vice President Ludwig, who initiated the conversation with you and um, invited you to present to us this evening so that not only will the council, but all members of the public are more aware of the program. So thank you so much. Thanks for the opportunity. You're welcome. Good evening. Next item is Agenda E1. Coventry Sewer Subcommittee recommendation for approval of sewer tie-ins located at 608 Tyog Avenue, assesses Plat 38, Lot 8 by Tracken, Tracken LLC, doing business as Diggs Diner, sewer assessment fee of $12,900. There is a remaining balance of $5,805 on the assessment after the 2021 installment bill was issued, and a sewer Tie in 4572 Tyog Avenue assesses Plat 28, Lot 4 by Christopher J. Kofua. Is that correct? Pronouncing Kofua? Kofua. Thank you. Uh, sewer assessment fee of $26,670. There is a remaining balance of $10,955 on the assessment after the 2021 installment bill was issued. Uh, Madam Clerk, please read the resolution on page 75 for the first item. Whereas after examining the applications, designs, plans, and all other submitted documentation, the Coventry Sewer Subcommittee has recommended approval of the commercial sewer connection at 
08 Tai Oak Avenue, Assessors Platt, 38, Lot 8. Whereas the applicant's designs, plans, and other documentation comply with all federal, state, Coventry rules, regulations, ordinances, and the town's engineers review comments. Therefore, be it resolved, the town of Coventry Town Council approves the recommendation uh, the recommended commercial sewer connection application for Tragen LLC doing business as Diggs Diner. Thank you. Uh, may I have a motion for this uh, resolution? I'll make the motion. Thank you. May I have a second? I'll second the motion. Mr. Marshawn, any comments? Thank you. Council members, any questions? Okay, we'll call oh, vote. Do okay. you mind if I just ask one question just because sure. I want to make sure I'm clear on it now that we're putting the uh, fees in. So they were given an assessment, have paid off to the point that there was $5,805 left when the 2021 installment bill went out. Just to make sure I'm understanding clearly. Uh, they're on a payment plan perfect. and they can pay it off that, over time. That makes perfect sense. I just wanted to make sure I was understanding yes. it correctly. That was... Thank you. Um, let's see. Roll call vote. Mrs. Shockley? Yes. Mrs. Lima? Yes. Mrs. Ludwig? Yes. Mr. LeBlanc? Yes. Mrs. Dixon? Yes. Five yeas, no nays. The motion passes. Next one is, um, yeah, it's um, resolution on page 94, please. Um, the item is, um, we read the item number. So, Madam Clerk, please read the resolution on page 94. Whereas, after examining the applications, designs, plans, and all other submitted documentation, the Coventry Sewer Subcommittee has recommended approval of the commercial sewer connection at 572 Tai Oak Avenue, Assessors Plot 38, Lot 4. Whereas the applicants' designs, plans, and other documentation comply with all federal, state, Coventry rules, regulations, ordinances, and the town engineers review comments. Therefore, be it resolved, the Coventry Town Council approves the recommended commercial sewer connection application for Christopher J. Koffa. Thank you. May I have a motion? I'll make the motion. May I have a second? I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Mr. Marshawn, any comments on this one? No, everything is in order. Thank you. Roll call. Mrs. Shockley? Yes. Mrs. Lima? Yes. Mrs. Ludwig? Yes. Mrs. LeBlanc? Yes. Mrs. Dixon? Yes. Five yeas, no nays. The motion passes. Next item is E2. Reference pages 115 to 125. Uh, Madam Clerk, please read the agenda item. Oh, I'm sorry. Please read the resolution, page 115. Be it resolved, the town council hereby affirms the award of a contract by the town manager pursuant to Article 10, Section 10.23 of the town charter for the award of the Winter Road Salt to Eastern Salt Company, 134 Middle Street, Suite 210, Lowell, Mass, 01852, with a Terminal located at 170 Allens Avenue, Providence, Rhode Island, through the state of Rhode Island and Providence Plantation, General Laws 45-40, period 1-4, interlocal agreements, cooperative purchasing in the amount of $67 per ton approved and awarded by the SALT by the state of Rhode Island master price agreement number 125. This award will be funded through the Department of Public Works operating budget. Thank you. May I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Thank you. May I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Um, questions. Um, Mr. McGee, would you please like to speak to this motion? Yes, this is the normal annual bid that we put take out for the road salt for the winter operations. Uh, this is an, a company that bought out the company that was there last year. Uh, it's it's part of the state MPA 125. Uh, we put on it that we are able to purchase around 2,000 tons of salt for the $67 per ton price, weather permitting. If it's warmer, we'd be less. If it's colder and more icy, we'll end up using more. But that's what we 
average for the uh, salt use of the year. We recommend. Thank Go you. Ahead. Any questions by members of the council? Uh, Mrs. Lima. Just out of curiosity, how have we fared in staying within this line item as for, in terms of being below, at, or above in the last couple of years? The last couple of years, we've been below to a point. Uh, last year, we actually were a little bit higher because we had a lot of icing issue, uh, situations. Uh, going back to 2014, we blew it out of the water. Yeah, had, that year was the year where it snowed like every single day. Yeah, exactly. We had 120 inches of snow. So again, I don't have the crystal ball and this is only, no, a, I know. This is only a guide curious. and this is the average that we've utilized in the, over the last five years. Yeah. So I had mentioned to Mr. Marshall when I saw this that, um, and it sounds like him and Lisa are already working on it, but um, doing kind of a rollover line items so that whatever we don't use for funds for salt in one year, roll it over into a line item exactly. for, the, for the next year. So um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions by members of the council? Okay. Roll call vote. Mrs. Shockley? Yes. Mrs. Lima? Yes. Ms. Ludwig? Yes. Ms. Stella Blank? Yes. Mrs. Dixon? Yes. Five yeas, no nays. The motion passes. Thank you, Mr. McGee. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Excellent. Um, I, agenda item E3 has been tabled. We are now on licenses F1. Reference pages 135 to 139. Um, I have a surprise for Madam Clerk. I'm going to ask uh, Councilman uh, LeBlanc to read this list. <laughs> first, first of all, um, I'm going to ask for a motion for the renewals, which is, uh, which is F1. I'll make a motion. I'm sorry, uh, yes, F1. Mm -hmm. I'll second, second it. Thank you. Mr. LeBlanc, would you please read the list of renewals for F1? It's page 135. Yeah, no, 135 through mm -hmm. 138, I think. Um, so the first one is BJ's Wholesale Club, uh, Inc., doing business as BJ's Wholesale Club, uh, 790 Center of New England Boulevard. Number two is... Uh, Boza Brand, doing business as Borelli's uh, Pastry Shop, 765 Tioga Ave. Number three is CCF LLC, doing business as Wendy's, uh, 2311 New London Turnpike. Number four is China Star, uh, 1028 Tioga Ave. Uh, number five is Coventry Donuts, Inc., doing business as Dunkin' Donuts, 800 Tioga Ave. Uh, then it says additional hours. Um, number six is Cumberland Farms, Inc., doing business as Cumberland Farms, number 1247, uh, 785 Tioga Ave. It also says additional hours. Number seven, Cumberland Farms, Inc., doing business as Cumberland Farms, number 1250, 436 Naughty, uh, Naughty Oak Road. Number eight, Cumberland Farms, Inc., doing business as Cumberland Farms, number 1219-1600, Newsnick Hill Road, additional hours. Number nine, Speedway, LLC, doing business as Speedway, 2825-764, Tiogav, additional hours. Number 10, New England Authentic Eats, LLC, doing business as D'Angelo's uh, D'Angelo uh, Sandwich Shop, uh, 795 Tiogav. Number 11, De Petrillo's Pizza and Bakery, Inc., 797, Tiogav. Number 12, Double A Refreshments Co., Inc., doing business as Dell's, uh, Dell's Lemonade of Coventry, 465, Tiogav. Keep going. Well, this is all for the public record, and we want the public and us to know. The Understood. List. All right. Uh, number 13. Um, so I apologize to the public. I can keep going. Um, uh, <laughs> when we get to Fita's, number 24, we're going to ask another councilman to take over. Sure. Okay. Um, Fida's uh, Lenny, uh, do business as uh, Silver Lake Pizza, 1146 uh, Main Street, additional hours. Number 14. Sarah G LLC doing business as uh, Subway 47 
Sandy Bottom Road. Number 15, JSC, New England Operating LLC, doing business as Burger King. Number 3133, 1145, Tile Gav. Number 16, uh, Labracus Ionatis. I think I said that right. Uh, doing business as Santoro's Pizza and Restaurant. 16, uh, 687, Tile Gav. Number 17, L.M. Took. Uh, to Corey Inc. Uh, do this as Taco Bell, 784, Tayo Gav, additional hours. Number 18, Trinity Management Co. LLC, doing business as McDonald's, uh, 11, uh, 1100, Tayo Gav, additional hours. Number 19, Mealworks LLC, 1606, Newsnick Hill Road. Number 20, Jolina's Ice Cream LLC. Uh, 975, Tayo Gav. Number 21, Apple Valley Grando Inc. Doing business as KFC. Uh, 824, Tayo Gav. Number 22, Newport Creamery LLC. Doing business as Newport Creamery Store 10. 781, Tayo Gav. Number 23, Rick and D's Inc. 17, Naughty Oak Road. Number 24, Summit General Store LTD. 25, Old Summit Road, Green 02827. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to ask Mrs. Lehman to continue the list starting with number 25. The Stop and Shop Supermarket Company LLC doing business as Stop and Shop store number 720, 900 Tayo Gav. Tom's Fruit and Deli Incorporated doing business as Tom's Market. 821 Tayo Gav. Coventry Lodging Associates LLC doing business as Hampton Inn. 850 Center of New England Boulevard. Walmart Stores East LP doing business as Walmart Superstores Supercenter number store number 2283. 650 Center of New England Boulevard, additional hours. Coventry Gas Donuts LLC doing business as Dunkin' Donuts, 851 Tayo Gav, additional hours. Murphy's Mobile Inc., 2291 Flat River Road. Pike Donuts, LLC, doing business as Dunkin' Donuts, 2285 New London Turnpike, additional hours. Umair, LLC, doing business as Coventry Shell, 642 Washington Street. Manabin, LLC, doing business as Subway Store, number 42061, 2405 Nooseneck Hill Road. Dave's Marketplace of Coventry, Inc., doing business as Dave's Marketplace, 23 Coventry Shoppers Park. Main Street Donuts Incorporated, doing business as Dunkin' Donuts, 24 Coventry Shoppers Park, additional hours. Mystic X Share, LLC, doing business as Holiday Inn Express, Coventry Providence, 4 Universal Boulevard. The Party B, doing business as What's Shaken, 577 Tayok Ave. Hunan Balcony Chen, Inc., doing business as Hunan Balcony, 687 Washington Street. Original Gentleman Farmer Restaurant, Inc., the DB doing business as Original Gentleman Farmer Restaurant, comma the 2405 New Snack Hill Road. Cumberland Farms Inc. doing business as Cumberland Farms Store Number 1290, 22993 New London Turnpike, additional hours. Hirsch Rodin Joshua doing business as Marathon Bread, 1030 Tayo Gav. Coventry Nutrition LLC, 47 Sandy Bottom Road. Utter Delights Ice Cream and Frozen Desserts, LLC, doing business as Utter Delights Ice Cream and Frozen Desserts, 1373 Main Street. NCD, LLC, doing business as Sweet Spot Nutrition, 16 Coventry Shoppers Park. His Fruits of Coventry, LLC, doing business as Tropical Smoothie Cafe, 2370 New London Turnpike, Blackstone Herbs and Coffee Bar, I, Inc., 710 Center of New England Boulevard. Thank you. May I have a motion? We're going to get a motion. Me and Kim. I think we made the motion. We made the motion second. And then Mr. Thank you. Mr. Marshawn, any comments on this list? No comment. Okay, thank you. Roll call. Mrs. Shockley? Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Can I ask a quick question here? Um, this is Amitrano. I noticed that Marathon Bread is on here, number 41. My understanding is they went out of business last year and we just approved baked approximately one to two weeks ago. So why would we be reapproving a license for them or renewal for them? I will uh, check with the licensing clerk um, to see why it's on the list. Okay. So do we need a motion to um, amend? Yes, we do. If you want to approve it without 
So I guess then I'd make Should a- we amend the list and remove that one particular marathon bread? You could if you are confident that you know what the name is, but I thought that was kind of the question. What is the name of the- No, no. the question is that marathon bread, we believe is out of business. There right. was a new business in that location, but we don't have the name of that business. No, it's called Baked. We just yeah. approved it last week. Yeah, we approved it last week. Yeah. That's right. We did. Do we have it. to reapprove it if it was already approved last week? It was approved, yes. Yeah, so it's already approved. So we can just take this one off. Okay. Yeah. And so it's this list. Thank you. Unless the that's, that's marathon right. bread. We did do that. Okay. So, so may we have an amendment. <laughs> may we have a motion to amend the list to remove um, number 41? Number Page 140, 138. Number 41. May we have a motion to amend the list to, to remove number 41, Hirsch, Rodine, Joshua, doing business as Marathon Bread. I'll make a motion. Thank you. May I have a second? I'll second, and I have a question for discussion. Certainly. Okay, open for discussion on the amendment. So I guess I made... I just was under the impression that this list was checked to see that we or do we just automatically put any business that was approved last year on the list or do we check to see if the business even still exists? How does this work? I'm just, I'm, this is my first time. Yes, this is why I asked Mr. Marshawn for comments. Mr. Marshawn. Yeah, Madam Clerk. <laughs> So uh, normally we do double check the list to make sure that all the businesses on there are current. Um, this must be just one that was just missed, but it's they're all annual renewals. Okay. Any other questions? All right. We have an amendment to uh, delete item number 41, Hirsch Rodine from the list of renewals. Um, roll call vote, Mr. Shockley. This is on the amendment. Yes. Mrs. Lima? Yes. Ms. Ludwig? Yes. Mr. LeBlanc? Yes. Mrs. Dixon? Yes. Five yeas, no nays. The amendment is approved. The amendment is approved. All right. Now, do I have a, a motion on the amended motion? We have a motion. We did an amendment. So now we need a motion on the amended motion. The, the amendment's on. No. The, 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 you, you have a motion on the floor now. We just need the vote. You just need to approve it. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All right, Mrs. Shockley. Yes. Ms. Lima. Yes. Ms. Ludwig. Yes. Mr. LeBlanc. Yes. Mrs. Dixon. Five yeas, no nays. The motion passes. Thank you. All right, we are now at item G1, public hearing. May I have a motion to open public hearing for, for the following? Annual renewal for Class A liquor license, Class B liquor license, Class B limited liquor licenses, Class C liquor licenses with additional hours, Class D liquor license, that is a club with a full bar, and new Class B liquor license, reference pages 140 to 148. May I have a motion? I'll make the motion. May I have a second? I'll second it. Thank you. Roll call vote, Mrs. Shockley. Um, I actually I have some questions. We're going to open the public hearing first. What are we voting on then? We're, 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 oh, oh, okay. We're yes. Sorry. Public hearing. Yes. Okay. Miss Mrs. Lima. Yes. Miss Ludwig. Yes. Miss LeBlanc. Yes. Mrs. Dixon. Yes. Five yeas, no nays. The public hearing is now open. Okay. The first motion is to approve the annual renewal for Class A. Class B, Class B limited, Class C with additional hours, and Class D liquor licenses. This is reference pages 140 to 147. Uh, Mr. Uh, Gorham has suggested that we could have a motion for these four, which are G1 to 4, um, and that we would do um, the other ones at, another, uh, at an, another motion. So may I have a motion to approve the licenses A, B, B limited, C, what? I did you say four? Uh, um, G. Oh, all right. Yes, you can. You can have the public hearing on. Yes. On the four. Yeah. And are you gonna? You're gonna move uh, approval of all four classes? If 
we don't have any other issues. Yes. Did did you call out for anybody who wanted to comment at public hearing? Not yet. Oh, all right. I would do that. Make sure you. But otherwise, yeah. you can vote. You can vote them all. Well, we had to start to open the public hearing. I, I we're, we're each getting a little ahead of the other. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. Now, may I have a motion to approve the uh, annual renewals of A, B, B, limited C with additional hours, Class D liquor licenses? I have a motion to do that. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. We voted. Oh, I would. You can have the motion. We'll have a second, motion and a second, and then we can ask for a discussion and yeah. ask for public that, comment. That's the same effect, same result. We're just putting the motion, the motion on the floor. It's lot, it's, it's it just puts it on the table. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. I thought we did that, so now I'm No, we vote. Uh, okay, we'll just review. We had a vote to open public hearing. Let's do it. We did it. I don't need any more that. explanation. Okay. <laughs> All right. We have a motion. We have a second. Okay. Mrs. Lima, would you please read the list of renewals? Then we will ask for um, comments from the public. So I'm reading Class A, Class B, and mm -hmm. Class B Limited. Yes, please. Class A, Coventry Discount Wine and Liquor, Inc., doing business as Coventry Liquor, 600 Washington Street. Crestwood Wine and Spirits, Incorporated, 725 Tioke Ave. Bill's Wine and Spirits, Incorporated, doing business as Bill's Liquor, 672 Main Street. Anthony's Wine and Spirits, 895 Tioke Ave. Main Street Liquors, LLC, doing business as Main Street Wine and Spirits, 1142 Main Street. Class B, Hot Spot Place, LLC, doing business as the Old Theater Diner, 33 Sandy Bottom Road, live show entertainment. Sherry's Come Along in LLC, doing business as Sherry's Come Along in 402 Washington Street, live show entertainment. Jaguar Tap Incorporated, doing business as Nikki's Lounge, 354 Tayo Gav, live show entertainment. Harris Bar and Grill, Inc., 666 Main Street, Dance and Live Show Entertainment. Apple New England LLC, doing business as Applebee's, 830 Center New England Boulevard. TCG Inc., doing business as the Cozy Grill Family Restaurant, 473 Tayo Gav. Dragon Palace of Coventry LLC, 577 Tayo Gav. Stevens Family Restaurant Group LP, doing business as Pat's Italian Restaurant. 1650 New Snack Hill, outdoor expansion of premises, grant, granted not issued. Filippo's Twisted Pizzeria Coventry, Inc., doing business as Filippo's Twisted Pizzeria, 915 Tayo Ave, live show entertainment. JW's Pub Incorporated, 433 Washington Street, dance and live show entertainment. Bean Barn, Inc., doing business as Bean Barn, 599 Tayo Ave, live show entertainment. Morse Tavern, Inc., doing business as Morse Tavern, 446 Tayo Gav, live show entertainment. KL Restaurant, Inc., doing business as Seven Moons Coventry, 856 Tayo Gav. Rampo, Inc., doing business as Black Oak, 760 Tayo Gav, live show entertainment. Coventry Tortilla, LLC, 712 Center of New England Boulevard. Lake House Tavern, LLC, doing business as The Lake House, 2260 Flat River Road, live show entertainment, granted not issued. Thank you, Mrs. Shockley. Will you continue the list starting on 143 for Class B Limited? Class B Limited, A. Pe Peglarini's Family Restaurant, Inc., doing business as A. Peglarini's Family Restaurant, 637 Washington Street. Genesis LLC, DBA Braza, 15 Sandy Bottom Road. Class C, Mr. J's Havana Shop Limited, DBA Mr. J's Havana Shop and Lounge, 1650 New Snack Hill Road, additional hours. Are we moving on to Class D? Yes, we're doing that in the group. Class D, Club, Club Jock, Jokes, 184 Boston Street, Dance, Coventry Memorial Post, number 9404, Veterans of Foreign Wars, Inc., 29 South Main Street, Dance, Coventry Men's Club, Inc., 30 Phillips Hill Road, Dance, Polish National Alliance Group, number 1001, Inc., DBA, PNA, number 1001, 15 Meeting Street, 
dance. Okay, thank you. Is there any member of the um, public who is in attendance here today who would like to speak during this public hearing for any of these licenses? Is there anyone on Zoom? Please raise your hand if you'd like to speak about any of these licenses, the annual renewal for any of these licenses. Please raise your hand. Okay, I see none. Uh, Mr. Marchand, any comments about any of these renewals? I do not have any comments. Okay, members of the council, any questions? Um, the chief is here, I'm assuming he there's no rec comments or recommendations or anything on any of these okay thank you any other comments from members of the council i am just curious i know they're all renewals but has anything changed class or is it only a renewal if you're staying within your class of license right it's just a renewal they would have to do something different if it would they would come before you if it was a new Portion. Gotcha. If they changed it at all. Yes. Perfect. Just checking. Thank yep. you. Any other questions? All right. Ready for the vote. Mrs. Shockley? Yes. Mrs. Lima? Yes. Ms. Ludwig? Yes. Mr. LeBlanc? Yes. Mrs. Dixon? Five yeas, no nays. The motion passes. We are now on item A6. Um, the vote next is on the new Class B liquor license, reference pages 146 to 148 for Dave uh, Thomas for Benny's Clamp Shack LLC doing business as Main Street Pub, 1152 Main Street. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. May I have a second? I'll second the motion. Is Mr. Thomas present? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Thomas, please come forward. Thank yes, you. Good evening, Council. Uh, good evening. Tell us about your business. Um, well, I have uh, three down in South County. Um, I have been in this location prior. I, um, I had it up for sale, and um, obviously it didn't go through. Uh, it was like 10 months of... Uh, <laughs> A lot of anguish, I must say, but um, you know, there's taxes due and there's other stuff too. So I just decided that um, I would I would come back in and uh, uh, welcome Coventry with a, a different atmosphere. And um, um, obviously, about uh, thirty draft beers. Um, we're gonna have some uh, nice flair gourmet pizzas, um, some nice gourmet salads, burgers, um, some pasta dishes, and. Um, on a family friendly atmosphere uh, with some milkshakes for the kids and and uh, see what we can do. And what are your hours of business going to be, um, Mr. It, Thomas? Uh, we will open at 11.30 for lunch and uh, daily. And then uh, accordingly to probably the weekends, we are gonna have a, a live show, um, probably some entertainment, maybe not right off the beginning, but uh, maybe down down the road a little bit. And uh, probably keep it open till one, maybe on the weekends, roughly Friday and Saturdays. Okay. Questions by members of the council. We'll, we'll also ask members of the public since this is a public hearing. But any members of the council have a question? Still a blank. Uh, no question. I just welcome you back. That's all. Th thank you, James. Okay, Mrs. I, Shockley. I agree. Uh, I welcome the restroom, the restaurant back. Um, I've been to the establishment and um, I really feel parking's the largest issue for you. Yes. And I really do wish there was something that could be done just to make it a safer trip across the parking lot because um, like I said, Police presence. Well, I <laughs> wish driving, I could drive 50 on a driving 50 on a 25 doesn't work. You know, just saying, mm -hmm. I agree with you hundred yeah. percent. It, it is, a, it is an issue with the people driving crazy on that road. Yep. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thomas. Are there any members of the public who would like to make a comment about this um, new Class B liquor license? Okay, any members on Zoom who would like to ask a question? This We are still in public hearing. Please raise your hand. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thomas. Thank you, ma'am. 
Members of the council, any other questions? Okay, we're ready for the vote. Mr. Shockley? Yes. Mrs. Lima? Yes. Mrs. Ms. Ludwig? Yes. Mr. LeBlanc? Yes. Mrs. Dixon? Five yeas, no nays. The motion passes. May I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. May I have a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? Roll call. Mrs. Shockley? Yes. Mrs. Lima? Yes. Ms. Ludwig? Yes. Mr. LeBlanc? Yes. Mrs. Dixon? Five yeas, no nays. The motion passes. Public hearing is closed. Public comment item number H. Is there any member of the public who would like to make a comment about it? I don't see any hands raised. Any member who was present here this evening who would like to make a comment? We're in public comment session now. Okay. Thank you. Okay, may I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. Thank you. May I have a second? I'll second it. Roll call vote, Mrs. Shockley? Yes. Mrs. Lima? Yes. Ms. Ludwig? Yes. Mr. LeBlanc? Yes. Mrs. Dixon? Five yeas, no nays. The motion passes. We are adjourned at 8, 8.35 p.m. Thank you.